Hey girl, it's Lisa. Hey Lisa, what's up? Well, I just got back from getting my pap smear. When's your next one, by the way? Uh, pap smear? Uh... Rhonda, you know how important pap smears are, don't you? Hey, just because you're in nursing school, it doesn't mean you know everything. What, what is pap smear anyway? It's a cervical cancer screening. A pap can detect precancerous lesions in your cervix that may turn into cervical cancer or detect it early in the game. Well, I've never had a pap smear before. Um, and I always use a protection with Joey, you know. So I'm actually fine down there. Whoa! You know, I don't have... Er, you know, Rhonda, I don't... If you have a cervix, you should have a pap smear. Unfortunately, having protected sex does not exclude you from susceptibility. You know, I don't have any insurance. So, what's the point of giving all this crazy good information to me? If I can't even get one anyway, I don't need all this information. Listen, girl. You're lucky that I'm in nursing school. It makes me resourceful and your best friend. Check your inbox. I just sent you a link to a community health clinic by your house. There is also a national breast cancer and cervical cancer early detection program that provides low-income, uninsured women with screening and diagnostic services. So, check it out. Mm, okay. Well, I'll think about it. Thanks for letting me know. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. I don't want to think about past me right now. Let me just watch TV. Anatomy. What? Past me? Yeah, RuPaul. What? Past me again? What? Well, what's going on? What's going on? Breaking news. If you have a cervix, you may want to pay close attention. Guidelines for cervical cancer screening have been established by the USPSTF. It is highly recommended that women between the ages of 21 to 65, regardless of sexual history, be screened for cervical cancer by pap smear every three years. Women between the ages of 30 to 65, a pap smear in combination with HPV testing every five years. Screening aims to identify high-grade precancerous cervical lesions to prevent development of cervical cancer and early-stage asymptomatic invasive cervical cancer. Wow, that's amazing. An estimated 12,200 new cases of cervical cancer and 4,200 deaths occurred in the U.S. in 2010, numbers which have decreased dramatically since the implementation of widespread um, cervical cancer screening. Incidence rates of cervical cancer are highest for Hispanics, followed by Blacks, Whites, Asian and Pacific Islanders, and American Indian and Alaska Natives. According to the CDC, in 2008, Asian Americans were among the lowest percentage of women 18 years and older adhering to screening guidelines. Adherence varies by among women by ethnic group, 66%. Of Asian women, 69% of African, Indian, Alaska Native women, and 75% of Caucasian and Hispanic women, and 80% of black women have been screened. That's not 100%, it's is it? It's not, Loretta. Most cases of cervical cancer occur in women who have not been screened. The USPSTF has found convincing evidence that adhering to these guidelines substantially reduces cervical cancer incidence morbidity, and mortality in the stated population. However, this recommendation does not apply to women at risk for cervical cancer. It is recommended you talk to your doctor about the correct frequency for your cervical cancer screening. Well, Loretta, what can I say? There's no way I'm going to try to argue a grade A recommendation from the USPS TF. And now, back to your original programming. Wow. Hi Rhonda, how can I help you today? Hi Julia, I came here today to learn more about pap smear and cervical cancer. Sounds great. Well, cervical cancer is an abnormal cell growth on the cervix, which is located in the lower part of the uterus that opens into the vagina. Most cervical cancer is caused by certain types of human papillomavirus that can be transmitted through sexual contact. Once in your cervix, HPV can remain dormant without having any symptoms, but eventually can lead to cancer, which can cause bleeding, vaginal discharge, pain, and even death. This is why it is important for you to have a regular cervical cancer screening because they can find abnormalities in your cervical cells before they turn into cancer. 
If identified early, cervical cancer can be prevented. Rhonda, when was your last pap smear? Well, I never had one, Julia. Then I heard about the scary incidence of cervical cancer from the news report yesterday, and I came here to find out more information about it. How, so how does a pap smear work? I understand your concern, Rhonda. Pap smear is done while you lie on an exam table. I will put an instrument called a speculum into your vagina, opening into the cervix. I will then use a special stick or a brush uh -huh. to take few cells from inside and around the cervix. The cells are placed on a glass slide and sent to a lab for examination. The results take about three weeks. During this process, you may feel a little stomach cramps and pain. Ugh, it sounds really uncomfortable. Should I really need to get one? Rhonda, cervical cancer screen like pap smears can save lives. If caught early, the chance of curing cervical cancer is very high. Pap tests can find abnormal cell cancer cells and prevent cancer from developing. Getting regular pap tests is the best thing you can do to prevent cervical cancer. In fact, regular pap tests have led to a major decline in number of cervical cancer cases and deaths. Well, I guess there are more benefits than harm in this process, right? Okay, I'm gonna get one today. Okay, sounds great, Rhonda. I will prepare you for an exam. Well, I invited all of you to discuss how we can increase the adherence to cervical cancer screening among Asian American women. Um, the recent journal I read from Women's Health it stated that Asian American women has the lower rate of cervical cancer screenings. It can be attributed to lower socioeconomic status, lack of inadequate health insurance, and some cultural factors such as modesty, fatalistic views, and preference for Eastern medicine. So, can I ask and gain more ideas in how I, as a CNL, can increase the adherence for Asian American to receive pap smears and HPV vaccination? Yeah, um, I think we need to collaborate with organizations or people that uh, will advocate for and educate women about cervical cancer like the Asian American Network for Cancer Awareness Research and Training and the Office of Minority Health um, with stronger alliances with the Asian community and a larger discussion about cervical cancer, the more the topic will be familiar with the public and rather than a few individuals. And so a larger percentage of women will know the importance of getting screenings. How can a CNL influence the healthcare system and healthcare providers to increase delivery of screenings? Mm -hmm. I have an idea. How about each month we gather a group of nurses to present on the topic of cervical cancer to our local hospitals, clinics, physicians, nurses, and other medical staff? I think this could really help healthcare providers to be up to date and informed on current cervical cancer discussions and recommendations. That's a great idea. It's important for healthcare providers to know the appropriate recommendations. It's also important to encourage women to get screened early. Um, I know the Cochrane database uh, states the methods that encourage women to undergo cervical cancer screening include imitations, reminders, and just education or counseling. So it's important to assess for risk factors as well, um, or even economic interventions. So we can provide this information to healthcare providers to improve patient adherence to cervical cancer screenings. These are all great ideas. I also read Annals Family Medicine Journal and they recommended to encourage physicians to educate patients on their regular health visits. And also physicians can address the patient's perceived sensitivity barriers and even teach them on behavior approaches to safer sex. And I also found the Cochrane summary list of very functional intervention skills such as provider information on STI and teach safer sex skills and occasional supplemented with very, very affordable um, resources. When we're doing this, we have to discuss this issue privately because that will be more beneficial for Asian women who value modesty, and I believe this can increase the discussion of cervical cancer in the public. Yeah, um, we can also create posters with information in different languages that encourages women to become more educated about their reproductive or sexual health. Um, we can post them in health clinics, in hospitals, or even college campuses. Poster information can include the preventative measures that we discussed, or it can be targeted for Asian women who have limited access to health care um, or language barriers and are recent immigrants to the U.S. So women can also be reached in the larger community by promoting the use of free sexual health services at clinics like the North Hollywood Center. Um, they provide free sexual health services. So. You know, I also read in the journal Preventative Medicine that women um, in under-screened populations were given the option of a clinic-based pap smear or self-collection with HPV DNA testing. And the study found that they actually chose self-collection at a rate of almost four times as much as the clinic-based screening. 
So maybe we can make HPV testing at home more widely available for women that are under screened and between the age of 30 and 65. Sounds great. Okay, so can you think of any social and or environmental and health policy implications of current screening recommendations? Um, well, I know that there's the Breast and Cervical Cancer Prevention Act of 2000, mm -hmm. and that allows states to provide assistance through Medicaid to eligible women who were screened through the National Breast and Cervical Early Detection Program and diagnosed with breast or cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. So this policy is helpful for women who don't um, adhere to screening guidelines because they're afraid that they're going to be diagnosed with cancer and won't be able to afford the treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another health policy was the Breast and Cervical Cancer Mortality Prevention Act of 1990. It authorized the CDC to provide breast and cervical cancer screening services to underserved women because it eliminates the financial perceived barriers and is necessary for the benefit of identifying cervical cancer early. That's true. Um, policies at the state level could also help, like states could encourage insurance providers to adequately cover cervical screenings, um, HPV, and pap tests. They could also encourage employers to buy, to buy plans with HPV screening and vaccines. So states could um, help develop awareness campaigns and collaborate with existing like-minded organizations in order to educate the public about HPV and cervical cancer. Mm, I see. How would all these enhance the population-based screenings? By decreasing patients' perceived barriers, their financial and knowledge barriers, and increasing their knowledge of benefits, like minimizing the risk of cervical cancer. According to the health belief model, women will be more inclined to follow through a screening. Yeah, I agree. Oh, these are all great ideas. Thank you for sharing with me, and thank you for coming and taking your time. I'll begin to collaborate with all the organizations we talked, and we'll be contacting you soon. Great. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.